the 17 year old girl that you see on your screen is now the winner of the Tata Steel Chess India Women's Rapid Tournament and it's a massive achievement. Why? Because in this event, we had the current women's world champion Ju Wenjun playing, we had Koneru Humpy playing, we had Harika playing. In fact, this was the starting list. We had Ju Wenjun, Humpy, Harika, Irina Krush, Anna Ushanina, Nino Batsyashvili, Polina Shualova, Vantika, Savita and Divya. And in this field, Divya Deshmukh has simply crushed it. You know, she played brilliant chess and she managed to score 7 out of 9. And she won the tournament with half a point gap over the current women's world champion Ju Wenjun. It's an amazing performance by Divya as you can see here. She beat Harika, Batsya Shwili, Irina Krush, Savita, Vantika. She did lose to Polina Shuvalova because of which in the going into the last round both she and Ju Wenjun were on 6 points. But what a way to win the tournament. Uh, Divya beat Koneru Humpy in the last round with black pieces and managed to take the, uh, the victory home. So this is her performance 2618. We are going to see that last round game. She's gained 181 ELO points. By the way, just so that you are aware, this is the setup of the entire event. It's very nicely done in the National Library. Um, and let's have a look at this amazing game between Koneru Hampi and Divya Deshmukh. Okay, so Divya is playing with the black pieces in this game and Hampi has the white pieces. Game opens with 1d4. Divya plays knight to f6. c4, e6, knight f3 and now Divya plays b6. Clearly in a very fighting mood. Because if you are, if you're wanting to play solid, often d5 is what is chosen. But with b6, it's the Queen's Indian and Divya is saying to Humpy that maybe, you know, I'll try to fight for a win if I can. Uh, because even Ju Wenjun is on 6 points and she's facing Anna Ushanina. I don't know what will happen to her game, but if she wins, I must push for a win. Okay, g3 played here by Humpy. Bishop a6. And now played knight bd2. There are many ways to defend the c4 pawn here. You can play b3. You can play queen c2. And knight d2. All are possible moves. She goes knight d2. Divya strikes in the center with d5. Now bishop g2 was played. In fact the line with e4 scores better for white here. And I think maybe Humpy should have gone for that. But bishop g2 is a natural move, knight c6. And Divya is putting a lot of pressure in the center here. So Humpy takes. I was wondering if this pawn sacrifice actually works in the center. But, act, but it doesn't because after takes knight e4, uh, knight c7, bishop f4, d5. Black is fine in this position. So dc5 was played, b takes c5, castles. And bishop e7. b3. Castles. Bishop b2. And now Divya strikes in the center with d5. So we reach a position after cd ed of hanging pawns. And this is the kind of position which Divya really likes to play with black. And this is actually the kind of position that Humpy likes to play with white. Uh, the pawns on d5 and c5 can become weaknesses. But at the same time. This bishop is hitting the e2 pawn and black has more space. Rook c1 putting pressure here and the threat is to take on f6. When you, if you take on f6, the c5 pawn hangs. So Divya quickly brings her queen to b6. And now rook e1 is very natural to defend the pawn on e2. White went, black went knight e4. I, was, I thought rook fd8 was also possible as a normal move to bring the rook in the center, but she goes knight e4. And the point for Divya is that if you take de, she's fine with such a position like knight e5, knight e5, bishop e5, queen e6, bishop f4, f5. Black is around equal. So knight e5 was played here by white. Takes, takes. And now Divya played rook a d8 bringing the rook in the center lining up the rook against the queen 
So Humpy quickly moved away. She's putting pressure on c5, but also on the e4 knight. And now Divya solidifies her knight in the center with the move f5. Pawn comes up to e3. And here queen e6 attacking the bishop. The bishop moves back. Rook c8. So now with the rook defending this pawn, you want to bring the other rook here. Knight f3. And here black had a good idea, good chance to sort of take over the initiative slightly with the move d4. Because after take, take, the queen is attacked. And with the bishop controlling the square, d3 is coming up. And this would have been a fine position for black. But instead, rook fd8 was played. Queen b1, bishop f6, offering a trade of bishops. Queen a1, good move. King f7, Divya is fine to trade on f6, knight e5 check, king g8, knight f3, king f7, and first Humpy does not repeat, she goes h4, Divya plays at 6 now there is a repetition it seems, and if Divya would have gone king f7, most likely the game would have ended in a draw, but suddenly, and this is what makes this game so so amazing, is that Divya wants to play for a win, and she plays bishop b2. And that just goes to show what a champion she is, what a fighter she is. She doesn't want the draw, takes, takes, and now goes g5. Uh, here, white had a good move. And I would like you to pause the video and think, what should Humpy play here? She didn't find that in the game, but it was a good, good try. So for the time being, the knight is well placed. It's defending h4. There's no problems. And the good move would have been b4 because you are fighting for the d4 square. So it would have been very good to play this. Um, and also very important here is that, you know, the c5 pawn is under pressure and the d4 square would be uh, attacked. But rookie d1 was played and now the via played king h7. This is again very risky because now you will see knight takes g5 is actually a fork. But the knight is defending it. So again, b4 makes a lot of sense. And one of the nice cute variations is that if you play rook b8, I have rook takes c5. You can't take with the knight because of knight g5 check. So these tactics were in the air, but queen e5 was played by Humpy. And after takes, takes, Divya now brought her king to g7. The position is still roundabout equal. Rook c2, king f6. Knight went back. Possible was to take, take and play f4. The position is quite, in a way, slightly ugly for white. But this would have been a good way to maintain balance. Instead, when knight f3 and now g4 pushing the knight further back, knight e1. And now it was a good move for white, uh, black. What would you play here? Yes, the winning move here was d4. And this was not played by Divya, but if she would have played it, she would have got uh, gotten a good position because after take, bishop takes. And after knight d3, put the bishop here. Knight is coming to c3 and rook c8 and rook comes in. Good position, clearly better position for black. So c4 was played. Bishop f1, king e5. Look at the king where it's going, rook c1. And now knight g5, very nice move. Uh, the simple point is that if you take, take, take. Then I take, 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 and rook comes in. And this is losing because this is hanging. And if you try to save it, my knight jumps in. So that was the point of knight g5. Uh, she played king bishop e2. Cb. And now it was important to play ab. Uh, of course, the bishop is defending here. So you can't take, I mean, you can't. Uh, in such a position take on e2 because then c8 is hanging so maybe game would have continued take 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 and rook b8 rook a2 king g2 and somehow white is doing quite okay here this would be around equal but uh played cb3 and now rook c8 was a blunder by humpy this led to her losing the game and after take take divya here played a brilliant intermezzo. She did not recapture it directly. She went pa2. And her point is that now she's threatening to queen. 
and the e2 bishop is hanging uh, and also c8 is hanging so if you play rook e8 check which was played in the game king d6 and now knight c2 to defend a1 and then we are simply chopped off the bishop in came a check you can't come to g2 because of check deflecting the knight and queening so i have to go king h1 and now a good move would have been a6 it's completely winning because the bishop protects the pawn but divya plays knight e1 and now the best defense for humpy was to take 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 check and bishop e4 black should win this eventually in this position um but humpy went knight a1 and after a6 it's over because black just going to play bd3 and knight c2 rook c8 bd3 rook c1 knight c2 and it's game over because threat is to take rook takes and bishop b1 to lock the rook up so rook takes bishop takes knight takes and white is a piece up but divya brings her queen king in the king is coming up and after king g2 king c4 she resigned here humpy because after king f1 king c3 knight a1 king b2 it's over if only white had one more move extra then after here if the king was on d2 this would be a draw like for example king d2 you don't come out king b2 and you push your pawn here then after king c2 it's a draw it's a stalemate it reminds us of the famous prague versus nakamura game from tata steel itself but here uh, of course the king comes back out and pawn queens so after king c4 here humpy resigned and divya became the champion of the tata steel rapid women's tournament 2023 a huge huge congratulations to divya who's going from strength to strength and becoming one of the best in the world with prag gukesh arjun nihal raunak pranav leon all these players doing so well amongst the boys it's very very nice to see divya vantika savita all these youngsters doing well in the girls as well and just to tell you divya was not supposed to play this tournament in fact in on the very last moment vaishali pulled out from this event because of health issues and that is the reason why divya got a chance to play here and she grabbed it with both her hands to become the champion what a champion she is